ESPN Sports. This is Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Hello and welcome to Grizzly Insider. I'm Jay Cohn in for Kyle Hansen today. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a lot to cover. It's been a big week in uh, Grizzly world. First, we'll recap a look back at the 121st Brawl of the Wild. It was a chilly day in Bozeman and an even chillier ending for that game. Coach Bobby Houck will join us as always as we look back at the Brawl of the Wild. And then we look forward to a big week as the Grizz take on Southeast Missouri State in the FCS playoffs this coming Saturday night, a game that will be on ESPN2. But first, in Bozeman on Saturday, the 121st Brawl of the Wild ESPN game day was there. It was an epic day. Unfortunately, it was more epic for the Bobcats than for the Grizzlies. Here's a look back. It was a bitter cold day at Bobcat Stadium. ESPN's game day setting the stage early on with their first visit to the Treasure State. And before a record crowd of 22,037, the Bobcats struck first and often. Right off the bat, quarterback Tommy Mallott would lead the Cats on a 75-yard drive. On a one-yard scamper, he scores, and just like that, it was 7 to nothing. But the Grizz would answer their first possession. Quarterback Lucas Johnson finds Malik Flowers in the corner of the end zone with a 30-yard touchdown score. It capped a 75-yard drive of their own, and it was all tied up at seven apiece. But the Bobcats would stick with their vaunted running attack and promptly march right down the field again. It's touchdown Tommy on a 12-yard touchdown run. Look at his elusiveness. Another Cats touchdown, and just like that, 14-7 Bobcats. On the next Grizz possession, perhaps the turning point of the game. When on fourth down, the snap sails over punter Patrick Rohrbach's head into the end zone, and the scramble was on for the loose pigskin. The Cats' Jory Choate recovers. It's 21-7 Cats, still four minutes to go in the first quarter. Another Cats touchdown and a field goal, but the Grizz had an opportunity to pull closer at halftime. But on a second and two from the Cats' two-yard line, Johnson fumbles, the Cats recover, stopping the Grizzly drive, and the Bobcats head into the locker room at halftime up big, 31-7. In the third quarter, more of the same from MSU, as the Cats' ground game would continue to prove unstoppable. En route to an impressive 439 yards rushing on the day, compared to just 96 yards rushing for the Grizzlies. The Cats would add 10 unanswered points in the third and held a 48-7 advantage heading into the final quarter. After Grizz quarterback Lucas Johnson re-injured his leg and had to depart the game, backup Daniel Britt comes in and gives the Grizz fans something to cheer about, leading Montana to two fourth quarter scores, including this 32-yard scoring pass to tight end Cole Grossman to complete the scoring. The final 55-21 as Montana State reclaims the Great Divide Trophy and statewide bragging rights en route to an undefeated Big Sky Conference record and a co-championship along with undefeated Sac State. Defensively, Nash Fausch had nine tackles for Montana. Patrick O'Connell, coming back from injury, had eight tackles in his return. And coming up next, Coach Bobby Howe joins us. We'll look back at that brawl of the wild, get the coach's thoughts on that. And then look ahead at the FCS playoffs right around the corner. There's more coverage of the Grizzlies online anytime at montanasports.com. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Welcome back on Grizzly Insider. Head coach Bobby Houck with the Montana Grizzlies joining us. And what a roller coaster of emotions, Bobby, after that uh, 121st brawl of the wild. Let's uh, unfortunately look back at that game that got away from you quickly. Going into that game, what, were your, what was the mindset of the team? Obviously, you were fired up. Yeah, we're always fired up for that one. Well, let me start this, Jay, by telling you I apologize for ghosting you at halftime. <laughs> That's I had, okay. I had stuff to do, and, and I was mad, so I wouldn't have been worth a darn to talk to anyway. But uh, we went into that game uh, looking really looking forward to it. It didn't go the way we wanted it to, and, and uh, you know, they, they did a nice job taking the, taking the win from us. They ran the ball. Um, we couldn't stop it, and that's the story of the game right there. 
they never had to punt in the game. I, you could have got. We've had a, a couple few weeks of that, that. Yeah. recently ourselves, and, right. and uh, yeah, we couldn't get them off the field, which is always a, you know, you got to get them off the field and got to turn the ball over, and we had chances to do it and didn't do it, um, and that's the game gets away from me when that happens. So the game really turned. We had uh, they scored right away. You guys came back on a great pass to Malik Flowers, but then. They just marched right down the field like uh, nobody's business. But the, the game seemed to turn on that bad yeah. snap to the punter. That's exactly when, when things kind of went south. You know, you're on the road against a good opponent. Um, you can't snap the ball over the punter's head for a touchdown. You can't be first and goal on the one and turn the ball over. And, you know, we need to make sure those things don't happen again moving forward here. We've had a few special teams uh, snafus this year. I'm sure if uh, Patrick Roback had it to do it over again, he would have just tried to kick that ball out of the end zone, which is really the play that should have been made there. Yeah, that's what he would do. You know, he's a, we've actually practiced doing that, but he's, he's a freshman in a big game. and The guy snapping him the ball is a freshman in a big game as well. And You know, I would tell you that that's never happened even in one of our practices this year. So we had to manufacture it a few times. We have practiced it. But, uh, yeah, that, that's a rough play for our team to overcome. Um, I just feel strongly that we can play a little bit better than that moving forward. And I asked you this after the game, what is the deal with the long snapper <laughs> at Bobcat Stadium after the Weber State game where it happened four times? And when it happened, I think all the Grizz fans went, oh, no. I mean, well, you well, must I'm sure they did. The I, I uh, probably said the same thing, maybe a little more colorfully than that. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the, uh, there's been a little pixie dust uh, sprinkle on some of those plays there this year and they've, they've had some good fortune and they didn't need a ton of good fortune as well as they were running the ball yesterday. They played great. They did. I'll give kudos to the, the Bobcats who obviously deserve to be the co-champions. We had a chance, the Grizz. How about had, that? You know, it just yeah. speaks a little bit to our league. We have two undefeated champions. It's just, I think it's kind of strange that everybody doesn't play everybody. It's, it's a bad deal. I'll second that motion. Yeah. But we had a chance, the Grizz at the end of the half had the ball at the one yard line and a little mix up and a fumble. And again, that was really, uh, as you said, shoot yourself in the other foot. Well, it's, it's sort of like if you go back to your days of watching college football and if you remember the triple option teams, that's what's going right. on. Those are read plays and there's a, there's a mesh point and there's a read and there's either a give or a pull. And when you don't get it right, then the ball's on the ground. And if you harken back to the days of Oklahoma or the, the academies or Texas, you know, when they were to get beat, it would be when they turned the ball over a bunch and were, were fumbling the ball away. And that's exactly what we did in that situation. You turned the page in the fourth quarter, Daniel Britt came in and you got a couple of touchdowns and made the final score look better. It probably didn't feel much better though. Well, one or a hundred, if you, if you lose, you lose. Right. And uh, so it does nothing, you know, if you win by one, you feel great. If you lose by one, you, you don't feel very, very good. And, um, you know, when Lucas was injured, uh, I thought Danny came in, did a good job. He's done uh, a real admirable job this month of November when he's had a chance to play. Well, we're going to get past the brawl of the wild because there's more to talk about Please, here on Grizzly Insider. Good news, the Grizzlies have made the FCS playoffs. And we'll talk with Coach Houck about Southeast Missouri State, the team that they'll be facing this coming Saturday. Stay with us. Get social with Grizzly fans and follow MTN Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Back on Grizzly Insider, Jay Cohn along with Coach Bobby Houck. And what a big week this is now as the Grizzlies turn the page from the brawl of the wild to another run into the FCS playoffs. Coach, uh, how nervous were you when they were unveiling the brackets this morning? Well, I, I thought we were in since last week after whooping up on Eastern Washington. But you never know. And you put it, you put it to chance a little bit. I thought we had a good enough record we had, with seven wins. And, you know, the schedule we played was pretty daunting. I mean, we played the top five on the road over the last month, uh, lost in, in close, close fashion in two of those three. So I think we had a pretty good case for the playoffs. Obviously, obviously we're in, 
and we're excited to be there. I mean, I just, I love this football team. Uh, I'm very, very, very grateful uh, to have another chance to coach this team because I love these guys. Coming to Missoula this coming Saturday night, Southeast Missouri State, the Red Hawks out of the Ohio Valley Conference. I know you don't like night games, and it's an 8 <laughs> o'clock start in, uh, on Thanksgiving weekend. That's going to be cold. Well, you know what? When you get to this time of year, that's just a great thing. Now, we're in the first two weeks of the playoffs, there's only one national TV game scheduled. That's our game this on Saturday ESPN night too. on ESPN2. So it's the only one on the big network uh, that's scheduled right now over the first two weeks of the playoffs, and we're in it. Um, I think that they probably feel like we're worth watching and worth putting on, and I hope that we are on Saturday night. Of course, the kids aren't in school. It's Thanksgiving break. We need uh, a big crowd here. I'm sure uh, the Grizz Nation will show up in force. What do you know about the, the Red Hawks from Southeast Missouri State? Well, I'd say this. First of all, our, our people seem to love this playoff atmosphere in the national TV, so I think we'll have a good crowd. and It'll be exciting and fun. Um, in terms of um, Southeast Missouri, I don't know a ton about them yet. I mean, we just got the news, and you know, while we're filming, just before we filmed this, we had our team banquet, and and uh, now we're getting the film loaded up and ready to go. So I'll get back to the office and start watching them. I know they're nine and two. <coughs> Excuse me. I know they have some great wins. Um, we have one common opponent, Northwestern State, who I think was five and zero oh in the Southland or four right. and zero oh in the Southland when when uh, Southeast Missouri beat them. Um, so I'm excited to get a handle on these guys. I've seen them on film before, just not this year. But they always seem to be uh, lined up really well. They look to me like they always know what they're doing. They've got good-looking athletes. Um, they seem to be a big physical team, generally speaking. And, and I would anticipate that's exactly what they are. Southeast. I know they have a good quarterback as well, Jay. Everyone in the, in the playoffs have a good quarterback. That's, I, I'm that's pretty true. sure that's almost a prerequisite. So they're located in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, and our good friend Marty Morningweg coached there, and I asked him, what do you know, Marty? He said they have a great recruiting area that includes Kansas City, St. Louis, Memphis. all of Missouri and Memphis, so they have an immense talent pool. Yeah, where they're located, they have, there's a lot of metropolitan areas nearby, uh, the Oklahoma, the Panhandle, Texas, Arkansas, and even northern Louisiana are all not too far away. So there, there's a lot of kids near there. They'll have a good-looking football team. I'm dating myself because I said, well, when will you get a chance to look at the film? Does it arrive on bus? <laughs> I still call it film, film, too. Don't yeah. worry about it. But you said it's just a click of a button these days, and you pretty much get their whole package. Yeah, just like everything else, it's kind of <laughs> move, move that mouse, and, and uh, you can get what you want. Just somebody's got to give you access to it. And, uh, I think that's already been, in fact, I know that's already been done. And as soon as we get done filming this show, I'll be back at the office getting on these guys. You said you were up at 6 o'clock this morning going over game stuff. You had your team banquet. How'd the team banquet go? It wasn't the, uh, the best day probably to do that following the brawl of the wild, but it's always a good, good time to hang out with the guys. Well, the sun came up barely, <laughs> but it did. And, and uh, yeah. you know, it's always good to be around the guys and, and you know, it's just like everything else in life. It, it is what you make of it. And we had a good time at lunch today, and uh, everybody's ready to look positively forward towards the next challenge. And as I said a minute ago, I'm just so grateful that, that this great, awesome group of uh, men that we have on our team gets to be together this week and gets a chance to tee it up again. And hopefully we can win and get another chance to do it again next week. And especially with all the seniors and, uh, you know, who have, contributed so much to the Grizzly success, not just this it's year, a, but it's a the, great group. Yeah. yeah and they, and they, great group. they don't have to end their season on the game last weekend. Well, you get, you get opportunities and see if you can seize a day. We did not do that last uh, Saturday. So as you look forward to the playoffs, is it a totally different mindset or I know all coaches say, Oh, it's just another game, but we all know it really isn't just another game. Well, you have to win or you go home. That's the, that's the playoff uh, the reality, mentality. Yeah. There is no double elimination in, in football. So um, there's an urgency to that. But by the time you get to this point in the season, you've got your routine. You know what you're doing any given day. So we'll be, as you mentioned before the show, we're pretty detailed on how our prep's going to be. And we'll hopefully have a good performance. And, uh, you know, anytime the other side of that coin is, Anytime you get to this point in the season, you're going to be facing a good team on the other sideline. So uh, we'll have our hands full. So will they. It should be a good game on Saturday. I hope everybody will come watch. 
and the Grizz, one of five Big Sky Conference teams that have made the FCS playoffs this year. When we come back on Grizzly Insider, we'll talk with Coach Houck about the Big Sky Conference teams and their matchups in the playoffs. Stay with us. Take coverage of the Grizz with you. Download our app for your favorite mobile device today. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. 